and sewer department. We're one of the largest, we are the largest water and sewer utility in the southeastern United States. Um, we have, we are very fortunate to have amongst the lowest rates in the county. On average, a customer will pay about $48 a month for water and sewer services. We have thousands and thousands of miles of pipelines underground, pump stations throughout the distribution system, and our, our, our goal and our mission is to provide high quality drinking water and wastewater services. We treat the, um, the drinking water, we produce about 303 million gallons per day and treat about 313 million gallons per day on a daily basis throughout Miami-Dade County. We have two laboratories that have test the water, about 150,000 times, uh, times a year the water is tested to ensure that we provide high quality drinking water. So where we are now, we are implementing a $13.5 billion capital improvement program. The community continues to grow. In 1960, we were less than 1 million people. Today, we are at about 2.6 million, and we are projected to be at over 3 million people by the year 2025. So we need to continue to invest in the infrastructure. We need to make um, repairs necessary, because when a pipe breaks, it's going to cost 10 times as much to repair it as to do preventative maintenance or to put in the pipes from the start. So it's important that we um, have operational efficiencies, and we are on top of the system. This is our capital improvement program. It's a $13.5 billion program, and it's got four components. A pump station improvement program with investments of $215 million. We have federally mandated projects in the wastewater system, mostly to the wastewater treatment plants, force main and collection system, uh, for a value of $1.6 million, billion dollars, excuse me. We have state mandated ocean outfall, which are investments of $5.2 billion, and then we have a series, hundreds of projects of capital improvement, which I'll go over some of them here in the southern part of the county uh, for water and wastewater improvements and also two new water plants that are planned in the future. So what does this mean to the community? Well, it means jobs also to the community. Uh, 16,470 jobs are expected to be created as part of these capital improvement programs, which is a $25 billion economic impact to the community. So this is huge. And the commitment that the county commission has and Miami-Dade Water and Sewer is that we provide work locally, that we hire locally. 23% of the, of the work is set aside for small businesses. Um, we are open to, competitive, to open and, and fair procurement processes. And we have a program, and we have a lady here, Marsha Jackman, that's working with us very closely. Um, Marsha, if you'll stand up so everybody can get to see you. And she'll be around so you can discuss Things with her, we're partnering with Career Source of South Florida to allow for training programs so that people in the communities can get jobs in the community and, and work as part of this, this um, $13.5 billion capital improvement program, which is going to be during the next 15 to 20 years. As I mentioned, um, we have among the lowest rates in Florida and the United States. Uh, this is a great analogy. You get 16,000 cups of water from Miami-Dade Water and Sewer for less than $2.60. How much do you get for a cup of coffee? How much is a gallon of milk? How much is a gallon of, of gasoline? If you compare it, you're really getting a bang for your buck. And just to go over, um, I wanted to just a little bit of detail about the pump station improvement program. We are building capacity for the future. If there's a pump station in the area that doesn't have the capacity, a business can't open. If a restaurant wants to open, a beauty salon, a coffee shop, whatever the case may be. If the pump station in the area doesn't have the needed capacity, it hinders business and we want to be able to promote economic development in the county. Part of this program will also include beautification of the pump stations. We are neighbors. We live in this community as you do. We don't want pump stations to be an eyesore. It will include beautification of the pump stations as far as landscaping so that they blend into the community. We're working with the municipalities. We're obviously working very closely with the town of Cutler Bay and Palmetto Bay, and we'll continue to so that we make sure that we um, hire locally, work with them on, on all the work that needs to be done, and a lot of this pump station work is going to be targeted to small businesses. On ocean outfall legislation, this is also a, a huge project. We are required by the year 2025 to no longer release the treated effluent into the ocean, so a lot of the flows are going to have to be moved from east to west. We're planning a new wastewater treatment plant a 102 million gallon per day wastewater treatment plant in, west, in the northwest part of Miami-Dade County. 
Um, the, consent decree, the consent decree project that I mentioned previously as well, the 1.6 billion will be for a lot of improvements to the three wastewater treatment plants that we have in Miami-Dade County. We have three water and three wastewater treatment plants. And one of the, the, the very neat projects that I think will be a benefit to everybody is we're looking at automate, automated meter reading, which will mean that we'll have electronic meters and people will be able to track their data on their computer. They'll be able to track their consumption, which is really a positive thing because right now people are billed every 90 days. So if you get your bill and then you have a leak in the system, it'll take almost, it'll take 90 days for you to discover, oh wow, I have a leak in the system and now I have a high bill. If we're billing on a monthly basis and you can track your usage, it's positive for you and it's positive for us. So there's a lot of neighbor, one of the neighborhood improvements that I wanted to mention is in the South Miami Heights area. Right now we just started in the city of Miami, the Shenandoah area. We have um, pipes that are very old, two inch, four inch lines. They're in the backyard alleys. In the Shenandoah area, we are putting in eight inch lines, retiring the backyard lines and putting the eight inch lines in the front so people will get better fire protection, um, better water quality. It'll help on the insurance rates as well. And there's another planned project like this in the South Miami Heights area. And the reason that we have selected these two areas primarily to start is because of our leak detection program. We have a leak detection program that shows us where there are the highest number of leaks in the system and then we determine based on that. <coughs> Excuse me. And I had mentioned two water plants. There's two water plants that are planned for Miami-Dade County. One is going to be here in South Miami Heights in the southern part of uh, Dade County, 20 million gallon per day new water treatment plant and one in the northwest area of Miami-Dade County by our northwest well field. So those are two new plants that are planned as part of these, these upgrade projects. And more important than anything, we want to make sure that the community is engaged, that we, you participate with us, that you know what's going on. We have a Facebook page, we have Twitter, Summer is working on an Instagram page, we have updates on our website. But the key is to make sure that you are informed of what's going on in the community and be here to answer any questions that you have. So with that, I'll take questions. Yes, sir. Uh, is the CIP a, a, a done deal? Does it citizens have a chance to uh, offer their input or just in the next election? Well, you can offer input about any of the projects that there are. I mean, there are some that are federally mandated, some are state mandated, and then we have other types of projects, community projects, but a lot of, a lot of the pump station work, the consent decree work, and the ocean outfall work is federally mandated project that we need to do. So most of the CIP is just is moving forward based on already the increased assessment? So most of the, the CIP, but there's a lot of other projects, like the new water treatment plants, neighborhood enhancements, Beautification projects of pump stations, all that kind of stuff, and we and we encourage you to provide provide input on anything that you'd like. Any other questions? <laughs> Silence. The mayor, I believe, had a question. Well, I I, I think I toured, as I said, and, and was very impressed with the facility here in. It is just south of our, of our town. But um, I thought it would be interesting if you could have somebody, I'm sorry, no help if I had a microphone. You think I would know that I should have a <laughs> politician? Um, yeah, I thought it would be really interesting if, if someone from your staff could talk about uh, the injection, the, the, the way that the, when, when it's mandated not to uh, send the waste into the bay. Didier, maybe you could um, speak about that. And, and before he starts to speak, I, one thing that I did forget to mention, um, as far as in District 8 for the three programs, the Pump Station Improvement, Consent Decree, and Ocean Outfall, there's $97 million in investments in District 8, and at the South District Wastewater Treatment Plan, which I know is in District 9, but it's still in the southern portion of Miami-Dade County, uh, $154 million worth of improvements at that plant, so I thought that would be good numbers for you to have. Didier um, is in our outfall legislation program, and he can address that, Mayor. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, we're, the, there's going to be a few different options in terms of uh, what we're going to do. Uh, 
primarily it's going to be moving the water because right now the water is moving from west to east. And so there's going to be, uh, you know, pipelines, uh, reconfiguration and getting the water from east to west. But that's not just going to be, you know, enough to be able to, to, to solve all the issues. Uh, we're going to have to go deep, but we're talking about thousands of feet deep. And we're talking about some of the deepest wells in the state of Florida. Um, and, uh, you know, the, 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 right now, if you go to the Florida aquifer, it doesn't take, you know, a lot of anybody who's from Florida knows that you just kind of dig just a few feet, the water comes up. That's a big concern because that's our drinking water source. So we're going to go down thousands of feet, and it's all the way to some of the bedrock layers. And so that's where the water is going to be trapped, and there's no mixing whatsoever, remotely any chance to be mixing with our drinking water source because we're going to be going so far down. Ten thousand feet. <laughs> yes. Currently, there's a uh, project going on at 87 and 216th Street. Uh, that's right at the corner of Wiggum uh, Elementary School. Uh, can you explain the impact that that might have on uh, what we are here to discuss this evening? Well, I'm not familiar exactly with that on 87. I can I can find out and get back with you if it's a specific project. Do you know if it's a water or a sewer project? It's a water. It's a water project. I'll be more than happy to get your information, I'll, and I'll give you a call back, and I'll give you all the specifics about it. I could answer that question. Okay. Um, With the town of Cutler Bay. Yes, I'm also <laughs> on the public works director for the town, and we always work together with uh, Miami Gate Water and Sewer, and we always monitor what they do. Southwest 87th, there is a six-foot um, sewer main that runs down 87th Avenue. And they are improving the sewer main at that location so it doesn't leak. That's basically the work they're doing. Okay, so it's not water. It's not water, that's the sewer main. So. Thank you. Thank you. But if you leave me your name and number, I can get additional details, maybe about the duration of the project and, and, and get back with you. Um, yes. So my concern, my comment really, is more about uh, accountability, mm -hmm. something that Dade County doesn't have the best record in my 36 years on the earth. Um, so I'm concerned uh, that we're glossing over, uh, as Lester told me, as I talked to the mayor and the chair of the county commission, uh, we're glossing over how we got here. And we're just attributing it to our growth. But if you watch the water and sewer YouTube promotions, uh, they have these videos. Mm -hmm. It says very clearly that you know we have 50-year-old and 80-year-old pipes. and. And I'm just very concerned that we're glossing over how we found ourselves in this position. Now we have a $13 billion whoops. Uh, and now we have to fix that whoop so the sky will fall. I wouldn't say it's a whoop. I would say it's a, it's a betterment project, just like any community. Um, pipes are old. They need to be replaced. Um, and so we need to move forward on the things that need to be done so that we ensure that our generation and our generations to come have the proper services of water quality and wastewater services that they need in any community. I mean, you can't even grow in any community if you don't have water and wastewater services. So. Sure, and I agree. My concern is that we weren't proactive in the last 20 years, uh, which would require both political leadership as well as uh, civil service leadership. My next concern is some of these predictions. Dade County doesn't have the best record of making predictions. Uh, 10, 20 years from now, uh, when this billion dollars Five billion didn't come to fruition. The jobs don't come to fruition. Uh, whose fault will that be? Well, that would just be no one's fault then in ten years, also. Well, I mean, the numbers that we're giving here is based on an economic impact study that was done by the American Water Works Research Foundation and the Water Environment Research Foundation. Those are numbers that have been um, collaborated by them, and we have a, a flyer here explaining that. If you'd like to take a copy of it, I'll be more than happy to, to provide that to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am? Aside from digging the well that this gentleman talked about, the 10,000 perfect pots have pretty long ways to um, We have a geologist on, on, on staff that she's just she just loves to talk about injection wells and the geology and the formations and all that kind of stuff. So it's actually very, very interesting. No, and it sounds like it is. I'm just curious in terms of some of the practices that are taking place in other parts of the country. Uh, I guess to get the oil out, they're doing fracking. I don't know if they're doing it to get water out. We're not doing anything dangerous. To our ecosystem, are we? <laughs> no. Or potentially dangerous? No, ma'am. Okay. Well, we're all here. Um, you can 
pass by all of the tables. We've got maps of the various projects that are going to be ongoing in District 8 and the southern portion of Dade County, Miami-Dade County, and we'd love to, to talk to you about it. Thank you.